happy Monday, Remar nurses. How are you doing? How is this week going? I hope it is a very amazing and fantastic day already. Of course, we're going to get into some NCLEX topics. We're going to talk about the next live event that I'm having. And remember, today is April 1st. So I hope you got a chance to meet our newest private NCLEX tutor. Sign up for his classes if you're interested in taking your V2 to the next level. If you have not seen the welcome from our tutor, please check out the Facebook page, the TikTok channel, the Instagram page. He is blowing up the comment sections on today. Uh, we have a topic coming from the V2. If you're ready to pass your NCLEX, this is the place to be. We will be going over, we will be going over Addison's disease. Addison's disease, very important. It comes from our Quick Facts for NCLEX book. You, go, you guys know this is half of the program. And we will be going to page, it's in the beginning of the book because it starts with an A. If you have Quick Facts, you know that the topics are in alphabetical order. So I did some great studying on Addison's disease. Remember, Quick Facts is a book that you are supposed to use and write in. So if you find that you read something in Quick Facts, but then we go over it again here and you hear something that you didn't know, um, feel free to write in this book. This book should look like it has been through the studying trenches, right? And so this is half of the program that I have. I think it's so important for you to have a physical book that you're studying from, but as well, make sure that you also have my lectures that are going to be played for you in the actual V2. So you'll watch those videos, you'll take notes on those videos, and then you'll also do your practice questions and your computer adaptive testing. And that really makes up a full NCLEX review. Don't be coming to me saying, can I only pass with quick facts? That is never going to be a yes for me because quick facts is always just part of my full NCLEX program. So get the whole program, make sure that you're able to pass the NCLEX in 30 days or less by having all of your bases covered. So we're going to go into Addison's disease. Of course, this is found in the Quick Facts book. It's also found in Quick Facts for nursing school as well. Remember, I released Quick Facts for nursing school for those of my nursing students who still had to get a big grasp on med surge because you were in med surge in nursing school or you were about to take med surge. So Quick Facts for Nursing School is a great resource for med surge and pharmacology as well. So if you're in nursing school, Quick Facts for Nursing School is for you, is for you. But you can also use those V2 lectures to make your nursing school experience a lot better. Because when you watch my lecture, lectures, what you'll see is that you'll be able to understand things quicker and you will go into your exams knowing how to get an A. You'll know how to get an A. So quick facts for nursing school plus the V2 can also be used for your exit exams. But we are talking about Addison's disease today. So before we get into the lectures, I actually just want to point out the major points here that I saw um, when I was studying this topic. So remember what quick facts says, when we talk about Addison's disease, Addison's disease is the opposite of what disease? So when I do this subject in the V2 lectures, I pair Addison's disease with, that's right in the comments, Cushing syndrome, Cushing syndrome, because Cushing syndrome, you're going to have an overproduction of cortisol, right? You're going to have an overproduction. So if Addison's disease is the opposite, you're going to have an underproduction of your um, of your steroids, right? So you'll see it affected with Addison's disease by which two steroids, which two steroids, if you have your quick facts books, um, are referenced in Addison's disease, right? They are going to be your mineral corticosteroids and your, what is it? Okay. And this is very important because 
when you talk about your mineral low corticosteroids and your glucocorticosteroids, when you don't have enough of those two steroids, it affects the body differently. So quick fact says a low production of hormones by what gland? Also, that's very important for us to know. What gland are we talking about? We're talking about the glands that sit on top of the kidneys. You have two of them, just like you have two kidneys, you have two adrenal glands. Yes. So the adrenal glands are underproducing this um, hormone, the gluco glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. Now, the gluco, when you have too little of the glucocorticoids, what you will see in your patients in Addison's disease is going to be weight loss, okay? You're going to have weight loss and you're going to have fatigue. And the glucocorticoids are responsible for the skin pigmentation changes. So we know that patients with Addison's disease have bronze colored skin. So figure out, well, why is that happening? Okay, low production of the glucocorticoids. Now, the mineral low corticoids, those, those particular steroids, those are gonna be responsible for our patient's um, hemodynamic instability. So their vital sign changes and their electrolyte changes. That is what the mineral low um, corticoids do. So I wanted to make sure that we understood that from Quick Facts. Okay, so when we talk about the major symptoms of Addison's disease from Quick Facts, now you can know, okay, that goes with that, and then that goes with that. So make sure that you write that in the notes section. So lethargy, weakness, weight loss, brawn colored skin as well. All right. Oh, one more thing that I wanted to say too about Addison's disease is that who gets it is very interesting. Who gets it is very interesting disease. Um, it's an interesting disease. So in pediatrics, if a, a child has Addison's disease, the gender of that child most likely is male. Okay. But in adults, if a patient has Addison's disease, what is the most common gender for Addison's disease in adults? It's interesting. It is female. It's female. So the majority of Addison's disease patients are female. That's another thing I had. Okay. So we know that um, the question here, because Addison's also goes to page six as well. Remember that the um, the glucose level in Addison's disease is going to be a low level as well as the sodium level. All right. And then I'll just let you read the clinical priorities. But now we have an understanding of what is happening to the patient, what the patient looks like. So let's go into the lecture now. So Addison's disease, as I mentioned before, it is also known as a primary adrenal insufficiency. So we're talking about the adrenal glands. You have hypocortisolism. So cortisol is the steroid, right? It's the main steroid. So you have a low production of this. Now, this is a life, lifelong, long-term endocrine disorder in which the adrenal glands, they are just not producing enough steroid hormones. If this is your first time hearing this lecture, you haven't gotten it in nursing school, you will absolutely learn about this in nursing school. But what will be great is that you will already have a great foundation of what is going on. So this is why we come to class. So the statistics are here. Um, initially, you got four to 11 patients per 100,000. In children, remember I said, Boys constitute approximately 75% of patients in pediatrics. However, in adults, the majority, 70% of the patients are indeed women. Signs and symptoms, this is how your patient will present. These are in addition to the ones that I put in quick facts. A lot of them are going to be the same. So you have bronze pigmentation of the skin, changes in distribution of body hair, gastrointestinal disturbances, nausea and vomiting, you have fatigue and weakness, the blood glucose levels will present hypo, 
glycemic, your patient will have weight loss, postural hypotension. And so um, I didn't put the other one here. So your patient will have postural hypertension. So we know that the blood pressure will go down depending on postural. So the position change of your patient. Now, what would we expect on the EKG reading of this patient? What abnormal rhythm would you expect for a patient with Addison's disease? I didn't put it on here because I wanted you to critically think and I wanted to ask you. If our patient has postural hypotension, meaning that their blood pressure is dropping, what would we see on the EKG? And the EKG is going to reflect the cardiac activity or the heart rate of the patient. So when the blood pressure goes down, the compensatory mechanism of the heart is to go up. So very good. We would expect tachycardia. Very good. That's the way to think about it. And then a craving for salty food. What is going to cause our patient to have a craving for salty food? What is going to cause that? Um, it is because our patient's sodium level will be what in Addison's disease? So the body is going to say, hey, we want to retain some more sodium. So the sodium level will be low, okay? The sodium level will be low for our patient. Um, adrenal crisis. Adre adrenal crisis is the medical emergency for the Addison's disease or Addison's syndrome patient. So essentially it is the life-threatening situation that can occur when a person who already has a low amount of um, steroids incurs more stress. So remember, one of the things that steroids help our body to do is to handle stress. So, you know, if a if you're sitting here and all of a sudden there is an earthquake, right? And your body is like, uh oh, we gotta go. We gotta get up and go. We gotta be strong. We gotta jump. We gotta run down, right? So cortisol helps the body to do that. So when you already don't have a full capacity to handle normal stresses of the day, like if you are um, late for work, if you have, um, a dentist appointment that you're really nervous about, or you've gotten into an argument with your significant other, those are things that the body releases cortisol for so that you can manage, so that you can get through the experience and on to the next step. So imagine if all the stressors that we deal with throughout the day, we barely are making through it. We barely are getting through it because we don't have enough cortisol. And then something happens where the patient has another stress. Maybe they have an illness or they have an, an unexpected challenge or dehydration or they get hurt. It sends them into an, a medical situation where they may not survive. So Addisonian crisis is very, very ser serious. And you guys can put up other things that just cause you stress throughout the day, right? Your kids get in trouble at school or, you know, your parents are in some sort of accident. It, it, you know, so patients with Addis, Addison's disease are extremely unstable. And so what happens is during the crisis, they have altered consciousness. They black out. They faint. They have circulatory collapse their blood sugar drops. And you know how patients are when their blood sugar drops. They're lethargic. They can't, you know, they're, they're, they're just, um, the level of consciousness is down. They can have seizures, all right? Um, this can also happen if they have some sort of steroid withdrawal. Their potassium goes up, all right? Very important. The potassium goes up because it is um, released from the cells. And so it goes into the bloodstream. It's very dangerous. The sodium level drops. And so these are things that you as a nurse, if you get a question on NCLEX about Addisonian crisis, you absolutely need to know what could cause it, what are the signs and symptoms, 
and what medications or treatments are going to be ordered by the doctor. And so I think we are covering those important points today in class, and I hope that they stick with you. So how do we check for uh, Addison's? This is something else you probably want to know for next-gen NCLEX, the diagnostic or the investigation. So we would do a blood test for the patient, and the blood test is going to allow us to check the electrolytes of the patient as well as the cortisol levels in the body. Specifically for the cortisol levels, the test is called ACTH. It's an ACTH stimulation test. Now, this on NCLEX can be tricky because the ACT is the adrenal corticotropic hormone and so NCLEX will say the doctor ordered an ACTH stimulation test. What are we checking for? And then they'll put the name here, adrenocorticotropic hormone, right? And you would think mm, that makes sense. But actually, this is a test that is looking for cortisol. The HCTH is what tells the body to produce or stimulate cortisol. So don't be tricked by the distractor. All right. We're looking for cortisol production here with this specific test. And of course, if the patient has too little, we think Addison's disease. And if they have too much cortisol, we think Cushing syndrome, Cushing syndrome. The treatment of the Addison's disease. Well, these are medications that you should be familiar with. Um, I put the doses here just for reference, but you definitely do not have to know the normal dosage range. So glucocorticoid replacements, this is your hydrocortisone, your prednisone, your dexamethasone. Um, mineral corticoids are the flutocortisone and liberal salt intake as well. That will, that will be a treatment because remember our patient, they're gonna struggle with some sodium retention. If we're looking at androgen replacement, uh, we will have DHEA, which is also uh, a, a treatment plan that the doctors may or may not prescribe. The And the reason why you sometimes need androgen replacement is because the sexual function of your patient changes. So for example, the majority of these patients with Addison's disease are which um, sexual orientation? They are females. And so their libido decreases significantly. And so that could be an issue in an adult female, right? So we would definitely want to address those concerns for our patient. All right. Now let us talk about your nursing responsibilities. Your nursing responsibilities are going to be bingo education. That's what we do. So we're educating the client and family regarding the disease. We're also protecting the client from influences that may tax decreased strength. So we want to make sure that they don't have unnecessary stressors in their life um, and making sure that their lifestyle is congruent with the disease process that they are trying to manage. Um, seeing that the treatment is promptly and efficiently carried out, that will be you, your responsibility in administering medications, being able to notice changes. That was something that I was talking about all last week in my classes. You need to be able to notice the significant changes in your patient, okay? No matter how small they are. And I know a lot of you are asking, when are you coming? When are you coming to Nigeria? When are you coming? Because I'm in Africa still. Um, I am actually going to be going to those places in the future. But before that, you'll be happy to know that I will be doing a virtual event for all of the places that I did not get to go here um, in the, on the continent. And so I will be definitely organizing in a virtual event. So all the information that we gave out on the live classes, the life changing information will be available to you all. So please um, stay tuned. I will be posting more information. There's just some logistic things that I have to uh, work out with the team to make sure that we are able to receive everybody that wants to join in our partnership. That's all. So that, that'll be coming soon. It'll be this month for sure. So just stay tuned. Um, I also have the class by way of the United States 
the uh, nurses in Orlando, Florida. We have a class coming up very soon on next um, next week. So uh, I will be looking forward to meeting you all there and helping you to pass NCLEX and making sure that you are as well getting your license as quickly as possible. So we have amazing things and gifts and prizes and all those fun things for you that are coming to my Orlando class. And so my schedule will be um, posted as soon as I make those connections and those uh, arrangements for you. Because whenever we come to a class or we have a class, we want to make sure that every nurse that comes is able to be received well and have the resources that they need. So I will be posting them. All right, let's get back to the responsibilities here. We are going to support the client um, confidence and cooperation as he or she improves and ensure proper diet and salt intake. I should have a she there too. All right. Okay, NCLEX questions, let's get into it. I'm gonna give you, I'm just gonna give you, how many questions do I have? I think I have five questions today. So we're just gonna do them, okay? And the whole goal is that you're able to essentially manage your patient with, manage your patient with Addison's and Addison's crisis. So the first question is this, the nurse is caring for a client who is having an adrenal crisis. Which finding is expected of this condition? Number one, hypertension. Two, hyperglycemia. Three, hypernatremia. Four, hyponatremia. All right, Remark nurses, now is your time to demonstrate that you have been paying attention in this class we went over. So content before questions. All right. And because you studied the content, you know that the correct answer is yes, absolutely. That sodium level is expected to go down. It's already low. So during the adrenal or Addisonian crisis, it's an acute life threatening condition that is precipitated by an internal or external process in the setting of a known or unknown adrenal insufficiency. So that's what we talked about adrenal gland insufficiency corticosteroid deficiency. And so the signs and symptoms are going to be hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, seizures, and an altered level of consciousness. Very good. Here's our next question. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Mr. Norman has been rushed to the ED due to an Addisonian crisis. He was diagnosed with Addison's disease six months ago. Upon interview, he reported his wife died last week. Which medication is the highest priority? Okay. Number one, ferrosamide. Two, epinephrine. Three, hydrocortisone. Four, metoprolol. This is a great priority question. Great priority question. You have a patient, they have an Addisonian crisis. So that means that they are completely unstable. It's a life-threatening condition. Are we giving, I see most people getting it down to two, three, and four. Are we giving epinephrine? Are we giving hydrocortisone? Or do we give metoprolol? Ah, Remar nurses today on the ball. Correct answer is three, Addisonian crisis. Well, why? Why over epinephrine, right? Epinephrine is usually our, mm, we love it. We love epinephrine. Uh, but the reason why is because of the cause. And so if you understand the cause of the crisis, then you can understand the reason why the hydrocortisone is the best answer. So let me just read it for my readers and you're listening. During an Addisonian crisis, the body experiences a severe deficiency of cortisol resulting in hypotension and dehydration. So hydrocortisone, a synthetic glucocorticoid, is the best medication. It replaces the cortisol and helps stabilize the patient's condition by restoring fluid balance maintaining blood pressure and preventing further complications. So very important that you understand that the way you fix something is to know the cause of it. And that is why 
Studying content for NCLEX is so, so important because if you know the cause, then you know the, the prescribed doctor's orders that are coming, okay? Um, next question is this. All right, I'm trying to get you guys there. So here we go. Here's another question. Very good. A patient with Addison's disease has received hydrocortisone therapy for an acute crisis. What is the nurse's priority assessment for this patient? Number one, monitoring blood glucose levels. Two, ass assessing for signs of fluid overload. Three, checking electrolyte levels. Or four, evaluating for signs of Cushing's syndrome. What's the priority after you give hydrocortisone? Because, we, we, okay, you know that's the priority now. So what do we care about after that? And I'm looking for in quick facts. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what are you going to monitor for? Blood glucose levels, assessing for signs of fluid overload, checking electrolyte levels, or evaluating for signs of Cushing syndrome. Uh, you have to make note that after you give hydrocortisone, your next priority is three, checking electrolyte levels, because you know that there's electrolyte changes that happen. Let me read this. Um, the patient already has electrolyte problems. We know that. But when you give hydrocortisone therapy, and you might want to put this in your notes, it also affects the potassium level of the patient. So initiating hydrocortisone therapy in patients with Addison's disease, the nurse's priority assessment is to check for electrolyte levels, especially potassium. Hydrocortisone therapy can lead to sodium retention and potassium excretion. Um, and so that means that the potassium comes out of the cells, which can result in hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, which is a life-threatening condition, complication. Yeah. Question number four. Here we go. Doing so good. You're really, you're, you're doing great. Nurse Hannah is checking the laboratory results of Mr. Anton. Which of these laboratory findings would warrant a pending adrenal crisis for the client? Number one, sodium level 100, two, potassium level 3.3, three, glucose level of 110, or four, phosphorus level of 2.5. Oh my goodness. Which one are we monitoring and we're calling the doctor and saying, you better get up here. Patient's not doing well. I know they may be in there and they look okay, but this is bad. This is Michael Jackson bad, right? Um, so the correct answer is going to be, you guys have it. You spotted it right away. Of course you spotted it right away. You're a Remar nurse, right? Is the sodium level. So the findings presented a significantly low sodium level. So if you know the normal value, put the normal value of sodium level in the comments, put the normals. I know we don't talk about the, the laboratory values as much as memorizing the numbers, but put the normals because there may be somebody that doesn't know or did not get this one right. The sodium level is way low. And so our patient will indeed not have that cortisol for this type of stress. So we will let the doctor know immediately come see you about your patient, right? Sodium levels low. Number five is this. Here we go. Final question. Very good. This question is very good because I have saw um, in my travels that knowing the different levels of nursing can be a challenge. So the nurse is planning the care of the client with Addison's disease. Which among the following would the nurse appropriately delegate to the unlicensed assistive personnel? Oh, here we go. Number one, administering IV medications. Two, assessing the client's level of consciousness. Three, changing the client's linen. Four, teaching the client regarding dietary intake. Oh, my, 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 my. You must be able to know what the registered nurse does, the practical nurse does, and the unlicensed assistive personnel does. All right, you have to be able to know that. 
And for NCLEX, we know that if you don't have a license, then you're not doing any treatments or procedures or teaching. And so the correct answer here, yes, Remar Nurses, is changing the client's linen, changing the client's linen. That is the only thing that the unlicensed assistive personnel should be responsible for doing um, and accepting acts that are in regards to what they're competent in doing. So assessment, planning, evaluation, judgment, administering medications, those cannot be delegated to the UA. P. All right, Remar nurses. So we have done a very good overview of Addison's disease. Of course, it's just part of the process. It's part of the process. You have to do the work. And so coming to our classes is pushing you forward and making you more grounded in your studies, okay? Making you more grounded in your studies. Just like in nursing school, they told you what books to get. And then you came to class and you went over the information in those books. So here at Remar, I really try to make sure that when you purchase something from our studying resource tools, that you feel comfortable using it and that you are actively in the process. It does not take long to prep for NCLEX. It will take longer if you don't follow instructions and you're not motivated to continue. So let me do this. This is Monday motivation. The topic is God's not done with you. God's not done with you. And you know, the class is very important, but I think this is the most important part of our time together. It is recalling and remembering the goodness of the Lord and what he's already brought you from. So this NCLEX thing, small stuff, small stuff and what God has already done for most of us, most of us. So here is the reference port. Mark 5, Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 34. Come on, somebody. The woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood. Somebody loves this story. Somebody loves this story you just relate to being in this woman's condition. You relate to her, 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 her isolation, her feeling like she doesn't belong. Let me talk about it anyways. So it says here in the book of Mark, and there was a woman, they didn't name her, but they told her problem. Mm, that's it right there. Some people they don't know you personally, but they know your problems. Some people know your struggle and that is how you identify to them. And even some, some of us, we think that our struggles are who we are. And so we allow ourselves to identify and be, mm, Okay, that's something different. Okay, so here we go. So anyways, there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And if you think about back in those days, when a woman was bleeding, she was considered unclean. So she was not expected to be in worship. She was not expected to be in the household. She had to isolate herself. And so imagine this woman had a discharge, an issue of bleeding for 12 years. And it says, who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all she had and was no better, but only grew worse. And so it was not like this woman was not trying to help herself. She was, and she was investing over and over. Some of y'all know what it's like when it, even with this NCLEX journey, you have been going here and there and you've been struggling and it says she she gave everything she had she spent all of her money but her problem grew worse and worse she was really a, in a desperate situation she had no other options she had run out of everything that she thought plus she found that no man could help her but Jesus what she heard the reports about Jesus. She heard about another man. She heard about a different man and he was coming to the city and he was coming to her. Um, and so she came up from behind him 
in the crowd. Because when Jesus came to the city, y'all know when Jesus touched down, it was indeed a huge occasion. So many people surrounded him. Not only the fact that he already had 12 men with him. So he had his 12 and then they had their friends and then people from the city heard. And so when the woman heard about Jesus, she fought her way through that crowd. And some say she was even crawling on her hands and her knees because the Bible says she touched where she touched his garment, but she didn't touch the top part of his garment where his shoulders were. She literally touched the hem of his garment. And that is by the feet that is on the ground. And so if I'm standing up, it would be difficult for me to touch the hem of a man's garment. But if I'm already on my knees, come on somebody, if I'm already praying, if I'm already petitioning God and I'm down on my knees, crawling through all the crowd, trying to get to Jesus, I could touch the hem. And so she touched the hem of his garment and she said by faith, if I touch the hem, she prayed a prayer for herself. She she called that thing as it should have been. If I can just do this, I shall be made well. I shall be whole. And so somebody here, if you could just touch, if you could touch Jesus, if you could touch the hem of his garment, you too can have faith. And this is what this is what the Bible tells us. It gives us stories for our own encouragement. It is a living book. And so it speaks life to us. If we could just touch the hem, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. I shall be made well. And then the Bible says she did that. And immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body. She felt it. She felt the thing leave from her that she had been healed of her disease. And Jesus, knowing that power left him, because that's what it is. She activated the power of Christ by her faith, by her perseverance. And Jesus felt that power going out. That's what the Bible says. Jesus perceiving in himself, God, the holy God, perceiving that this woman called power from the living God had gone out, he immediately turned about the crowd and asked, not because he didn't know, not because he did not know. Jesus knows all things. He said, and he allowed the woman a personal interaction with him. He says, who touched my garments? And you know how sometimes God and, and read the story of Jesus. He asks questions and everybody's confused. <laughs> he asks a question and nobody knows what he means. The, the Bible says the disciples, his friends, the people who were with him all the time, they struggled to really understand him. And so the disciples said, Lord, you see the crowd and pressing around you. And yet you say, who touched me? As if to say, Jesus, all these people are here. Why would you ask that? Why would you ask that? There's so many people around. Well, why, why, why would you need to know who touched you? And, but, but Jesus, he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, she's, she, she's so close that she hears Jesus. She's still very close to him. So she, she, she hears him ask the question, the woman knowing what happened to her came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Listen to this. The Bible says the beginning of wisdom is what? The fear of God, right? And we are not to be, oh, afraid of the punishments or the consequences of our relationship with God, but just understanding that you are interacting with the God of the universe, the creator of all things, the, the, the rock of ages, the alpha and the omega. And so when you are asking things of God, 
it should be a spirit of reverence in your life. You should be in a prostrate position. You should have in your mind, it's it's your uh it's it's not so much your physical position, but it is your 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 emotional, your um, your mental position when we come to God, because he is holy, holy, holy. That's what the angels say. Holy, holy, holy. And so we have to be able to understand that we are engaging in wisdom, a a wise being. And so, of course, we tell God the truth. We tell God the truth. This is where I am, God. You made me. I'm struggling. I'm struggling with this fear. I'm struggling with this spirit of depression. You see that I am, I'm having, you know, unnatural thoughts. I don't want to go on. I, I, I need help. You have to be honest with God so that he can deal with the real you. But we have a, we have this ability where we're always pretending we're pretending like everything is okay. We're putting on a face, you know? And so God does not want to work with who you're pretending to be. God wants to work with who you are, who you actually are. And so you have to be for real about it. Okay. You got to be for real about where you need help, where you are and where you're struggling. And the thing about it is you don't have to tell everybody because this woman told everybody her business and nobody could help her. Nobody could help her. But she did find the cure. And her cure was not in man, it was in Jesus. And so he said to her, daughter, daughter, your money has made you whole. No. Daughter, your, 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 your material things, da- no. Daughter, your education, no. Daughter, your faith has made you well, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And so there is a physical healing and there is a mental healing, right? And so in our process, in our understanding of time, We want to go to God. And of course, we want the things in the physical world, but there is also a spiritual world. There is also a supernatural healing that needs to take place in our minds and in our hearts that we no longer see ourselves as diseased. We no longer see ourselves as discouraged. And so no matter what situation that you are in, this story tells me that you can have a different future. And so I was saying this, Don't let your current situation determine your future position. Where you are right now is not where you have to stay. The job you are working at right now is not the job you will retire from. It is not. Your financial situation, your your relationships, some of you may be in a bad relationship. You can change that thing. You can leave that thing. You can renew or restore. All right. But sometimes we are in situations because God is trying to change our heart, change our character. We will not become who we are meant to be if we have not struggled through something. If everything is always easy, then you have no reason to grow. You have no reason to change. So understand What the Bible says, the temporary, the temporary and short sufferings that we endure now are preparing us for an eternal glory. But you will not appreciate it if you have not built up the right character. And so as God is changing us, as he's giving us an opportunity to go into the next level of our lives, let us remember that Only what we do for God lasts. Everything else is temporary. So it's really not about us. In nursing is a ministry, guys. So 
That's Monday motivation. A really great, listen, a really great reminder, a really great reminder of our purpose. And those who have purpose have a future. Those who have purpose, we don't have time to be discouraged because we have so much living to do. We have so much living to do. So I hope that you can be a blessing to someone today. Our time together has been so sweet. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for laughing with me. Thank you for crying with me, even, even as we are on our mission to help every nurse every nurse just take ownership of her nursing career, get this NCLEX passed. And um, the way that we're doing that, it just happens to be studying together. All right. It just happens to be studying together. So um, if you have my V2 program, let me know. Let me know how it's going. Let me know how you need help. Um, the process is guided by a daily study calendar. So I just want to remind you all, get out your daily study calendar so that you are doing the work of the day. You're doing the work of the day. No more, no little. But if we take it day by day, we will surely come to the end. You'll be able to do that final examination, the computer adaptive testing, and then sit for your NCLEX. Ah, NCLEX. <sighs> We're going to pass it, guys. Remember, I say this all the time. I believe it. And I will see you on Wednesday. I'll see you on Wednesday. You can say it with me. Say I. Let's just say I today. We're going to change that. We're going to say I. I can, I will, and I must pass NCLEX. I can, I will, and I must 